Welcome to the Visual Arts Underground. That is what I call it. I mean, when people ask me about this show and what am I doing in my day-to-day life, I say it's basically the Visual Arts Underground. And when you see an image like this, it's hard not to... It's hard not to disagree with myself. Welcome back. Artist Journal, July 13th, 2023. Broadcasting from a beautiful, calm, sunny day on the waters of the high sea of the imagination. Welcome back. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Many of you probably think you know who this is, and I think I know who this is, but this person, this identity, this entity is under a new name. And so, of course, it has all the markings, the trappings, the the signature. It has all the the details of a Hasdrubal waffle piece. Of course, it's, I think it's Kujeb. Kujeb is the name of this artist. And I was just thinking to myself, this is my private thoughts as I guzzle coffee before starting this show. My private, private thoughts to myself is, you know, Art News wishes they could put this on the front page of their, you know, website. They wish. I mean, this is so cool. As we've come to be very, it's familiar territory here for us with now called Kujeb with these awesome synths, you know, clearly using uh, retro tools like and often kids uh, drawing tools here. Allah has Drupal Waffle, but here it's Kujeb and just these beautiful digital textures and the flashing kind of gif in the background. And of course, some of my favorite and a lot of your people, a lot of people's out there, favorite iconography, you know, synths and music gear. And here we have two aliens with two huge Marshall amplifiers, seemingly. And it's just pretty awesome. It's just really cool. It's just really cool. It makes me very proud to start this show with this. So let's see what happened here. Kujeb, Encore, indeed, Encore, indeed. The Sleek Stack performance at Kujeb's house house party, recorded for posterity, they received one drink ticket per member. So for all we know, and there's even music here, lest we forget, I have to be very delicate with my mic. I updated the driver, which was probably a mistake. So some experimental music here. I mean, it's really, really cool. You know, and what else I like about it, it has the feeling of a contemporary art museum in the music and even just the strangeness of the whole kind of work. At the same time, it's totally accessible and little kids could be totally into it. And so that is hitting the sweet spot, my favorite spot, the most important spot, the most coveted spot, which is the zone between accessibility and the avant-garde. If you can be simultaneously avant-garde and accessible, to me, that is the ultimate sweet spot. It is the prize that we are all, or many of us, are pursuing here. Uh, It is something that contemporary art has left behind in many ways. I, I I get the sense that aesthetics, you know, making something kind of beautiful that a kid can like, is making a comeback. I do get that sense. You're seeing painting make a comeback. We see it in the, at the end of these episodes where I'm showing the Instagram work more from the contemporary art world. Aesthetics are making a comeback, I would argue. I think the whole, I mean, in Berlin, you still get quite a bit of the, what is tempting to call, you know, speaking painting with a broad brush here, uh, you know, dry conceptualism you know, where, you know, aesthetics are almost seen as old fashioned, right? And so kids, if you think you're bored, just imagine you're seven year old, right? So this kind of idea. So I do think aesthetics are making a comeback, especially here, though. I mean, so just totally, totally awesome. Beautiful work. Edition of three, uh, just uber cool here. Marisi just transferred. I mean, very uh, Little Cakes making an offer there. Shout out to Little Cakes and to Kujib, Kujib. Uh, and so just sent out, I mean, and of course, this has all the signature, the trademark of Hasdrubal, 
in Kujeb's in the reincarnation of has dribble waffle as Kujeb here, just sending it out, could have put it at auction, probably could have gotten hundreds of dollars for it, at least a hundred. And there he goes. So just a class act and just classy and fun. And he put out a ton actually that I missed here. This is from July 5th. And this went to Ile, I believed a beautiful one of one, the keyboard principal, interesting title here, just minted and sent to Ile. Uh, you know, just, you know, go beat dances to the beat of his own drum, doesn't he? And here, just another beautiful work, great texture. Love the keyboard here. I absolutely adore this. Is that IBM keyboard with just, you know, a whole bunch of text on top, almost impressionistically put on top of this keyboard. And hilariously, too, I mean... Uh, there's kind of an alien theme, as we saw in the last piece there, the two aliens in front of the Marshall amplifiers here. So there's a bit of a theme that seems to be running through the Kujeb works. And here it looks like a newscaster or something with a keyboard uh, whose hands are turning alien, perhaps referencing a movie. I think uh, Kujeb watches a lot of... Uh, movies. I, that's one of my weakest spots, actually, is movies. Maybe one day I'll do it. I, I just never feel like I have enough time to de dedicate to two hours, but or more. These days, I mean, sometimes it's three hours. Uh, continuing on, more works by Kujeb. So this looks like Loch Ness, an encounter at Loch Ness. So uh, more highly experimental, avant-garde uh, digital art. I mean, what else do you call this? This is just really cool. Uh, really fun and really there's just so much to chew on uh, aesthetically here from a process point of view. So again, that sweet spot between the avant-garde and, and the accessible. And here's just like a cool, you know, again, looks like it was painted, maybe Mario paint or whatever the program was with this kind of out of focusy, you know, almost you see, it almost looks like a picture of a screen. Like someone, you know, you see this, these rays here, it almost looks like a photo of a screen and that wouldn't shock me at all if his Drupal was doing that. Usually, you know, you're trying to do that to, you want to get rid of these little effects. He's celebrating them. If that's what's going on here, that's what it looks like to me. So addition of three, again, just transferred one to little cakes. All right. Little cakes got to work. That is excellent and beautiful work there. And another classic one. And again, even in the composition. It is signature here, K-S-O-T-L, Kujib Shero on the Lamb. So just wickedly full of imagination here as the helicopters pursue our character here on this super simple, you know, uh, road here. Making it look easy. Again, this feels like, again, I would argue... And Hasdrubal probably just does it naturally, or Kujib just does it naturally. Like, it's... So simply done, I mean, it's tempting to call it, you know, as Bite by Bit had that one work there that said revolutionary. It, there is something like radically almost revolutionary here. And this is going to bring up a whole other massive new theme, which many of you have commented on so far, which is the visual impact of video games on what we're doing here. And I would argue maybe that's what's going on with this composition with just like the street across. Not sure, but what we're gonna, what I'm starting to realize is I think we're in, and here's my thesis uh, that I, this is what I've just been kind of my epiphany of the last day or so, as I've been thinking about the video game impact and the visual influence of video games. It's like, this is second generation digital art. What really separates, this is the thesis, and we can agree or disagree along the way as we go through this uh, show, and I need to speed it up here because there's actually too many works in this show, but uh, there's nothing I could take away. But what I'm arguing here, or at least in my mind, what I'm thinking about is the difference between uh, digital art as we kind of know it, and maybe the first generation of digital art that started, let's say, in the 50s or 60s, is the visual impact and influence of video games. And that is the difference because of course, people that grew up in the 1950s or 60s did not grow up on video games, yet most people, even me, you know, more when I was youngest, 
you know, maybe from six to 12, maybe that was the most important time in my life to actually, you know, it wasn't so much the Nintendo, which I did a little bit, uh, but it was more like Apple IIe and all that, like early kind of 1980s video games. Shout out to mom. Uh, thanks to my mom who brought home an Apple IIe computer in like 1983 or something like this. Like I was very young, was playing sneakers and Ultima three and all that sort of thing. So just another kind of more, another provocation for our, uh, for consideration here. Continuing on. So actually I got to speed up the, speed up the show here. Keyboard update. So continuing with this keyboard, uh, sorry, keyboard upgrade and key, continue with the keyboard uh, theme edition of six for 195 Tezos. So the market is loving it and sold. Okay. So this one actually sold for only 677 sold out within basically six minutes here and Mikey Wilson lucky enough and then someone picked up three and then little cakes I'm seeing this as more and more of a trend where people are starting to buy everything I guess it is what it is and I'm happy for the artist so so be it right and let's just see if we can get a little bit of the music uh, kind of similar to the first kind of similar experimentalism I mean it's tempting to think that this is almost like an samples of an alien broadcast or what might be considered an alien broadcast because look at this i mean we have uh what looks like another alien keyboard upgrade so very interesting buy now for 195 tezos so here's kujeb's page and so there's one page here beautiful start there and so you see again the alien so there seems to be and here you see the exercise guy whose name I can't remember exercising with a couple of aliens, New World Order. I mean, really brilliant stuff and not cheap, by the way, not cheap. So the market's loving it and you got to pay if people are going to part ways with their Kujeb work. Just beautiful. And that alien work, encore, encore indeed. And, you know, I didn't, wasn't even trying. You know, so I posted this work again. This is part of a nostalgia studies and big shout out to Explainer Gallery. But, you know, even for me with my, you know, limited video game experience, I was already making work with video games as well. And it, it didn't even really dawn on me for me, like the nostalgia studies. It's also like Star Wars boxes of like those action figures. It's comics. So, you know, video games was just one part of that. But nevertheless, uh, I'm kind of back to this whole theme. So. Anyway, I, uh, I posted this yesterday and big thank you, a one of one for 30 Tezos, load runner level eight uh, to a made on Procreate and thank you Explainer Gallery for the purchase. Let's see if this is loading up here. I am gonna be on a Twitter space and it is awesome. Uh, gonna be on a Twitter space on Friday, set your reminders and I will, I have retweeted this out, Mars AI art today. Uh, and this is with AI art today. So daily spaces. So that is tomorrow. So just a heads up there and thank you to AI art today for the invite. That sounds great. And so looking at the comments quickly here, uh, Kyle Flemmer, another great episode. Surreal to see my work up there with the greats. I love that. Uh, thanks for sharing. My pleasure. Really appreciate how you, and I really appreciate this comment here actually, really appreciate how you follow lines of influence through the community from one artist and artwork to another. And I'm glad that you appreciate that because I have gotten criticism in the past. You always show the same artists and I always, I think I am always incorporating new artists in, but there is a narrative uh, that I'm trying to identify here. There is a story that is to be told and it's not just about, you know, finding the new artists so we can buy them all up and speculate. It's about, you know, telling the story uh, as best I can. And I'm going to miss a ton of stuff. As you just saw, I missed all that Hasdrubal or Kujeb work, right? So it's not going to be on time. Sometimes it'll be late. Sometimes it'll be missed. Uh, but I appreciate that you can see what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I also, Demon Ego. Uh, hey, Adrian, thank you for featuring my work and your love. I would like to answer your questions in my I repaired my broken spots with gold work and some of my previous works. I created the colored areas you mentioned through Photoshop and Illustrator, print them out and paste them on the notebook. So of course, these are the notebooks with the gradients in them collaged on. And this method emerged from my experience of establishing the connection between digital and reality, their contribution to each other. So playing with, yeah, what I call to digital to physical and back 
or traveling through the mediums. Uh, one, one of the great, one of my favorite themes, what I'd argue is maybe the main conversation in contemporary art since Warhol's, from the late Warhol, if you look at the Goethe works, where again, tracing the Goethe image with a graphite, taking a picture of that, zooming in, blowing it up, screen printing it, okay, uh, traveling through the mediums and to wonderful effect, to wonderful effect. Uh, continuing on, and this method emerged from my experience of establishing the connection between digital and reality and their contribution to each other, as you described in one of your previous videos through my work. Of course, I would try to achieve these areas with spray paint or other paints, but then I guess I could not produce such clean and effective visuals, which is in itself an interesting, isn't it? Like it, it gives that collage, that physical work, it gives it a, there's some, it couldn't have been made, one could argue, you know, previous to having a home printer or like before 1980 for the sake of argument. Exhibiting my notebooks is a great idea. I would love to do that one day too. Thanks to an offer I got from an agency in England in 2014, I have my sketchbook on display in a museum in Greece ever since, but I no longer give away my new notebooks and works to anyone permanently. I don't want to leave them anymore. This feeling has emerged in me in the last months. I could I used to be easily separated from them and even proud to hang in people's homes. I don't know why it turned into this feeling. Maybe it's because it's now because maybe it's because I now attribute quote very personal meanings to the content and stories of my work. So super interesting uh, from Demon Ego, and thank you again for sharing the process and congratulations on being in a museum in Greece. Sounds like it's like on a permanent display there, which is pretty rad. To quote Kujeb. Stip and Pixel, user 10118, and Elias Diesler and Primitive Intel, thank you. And I think Primitive Intel is saying, again, not me in the, uh, in the uh, show, feel free to message me. And that goes for anyone. I can't guarantee, sometimes there's literally uh, too many messages. Uh, so, uh, but I'll do my, I always do my best. And I am just, you know, I am paying attention more than people might realize sometimes. Uh, continuing on. This is from Bulls, from what I understand here. Artistas Argentinos in Web3. So on YouTube, you can find Neutro Arts. So also the Pixel Network here may be growing. Here is just a beautiful compilation. It's, in, it's crazy, actually, of how many artists there are coming out of Argentina. This is an hour and 10 minutes long. And there's Diego Berra. Uh, I love it. And I think that was Flora. I mean you recognize so many of these artists. So it's just super cool here. I remember that work. This is it's bite by bit out of Argentina too. That is wild. So again, using those kind of kids programs and everything. So just a heads up here, Neutro Arts on YouTube. Uh, that is Bulls and put together a really nice compilation. So go share away on that. I was wondering out loud to myself, how do you get some of these RADA tokens or RADA images that are being sent out to everybody? Here it is. Someone sent me the tweet. Thank you for sending that. RADA holders of MF -er for Life token, link below, will be airdropped with the seventh chapter of the alternative adventures of Captain Dead Rat Pirate. And there is more to be announced this week. Collect them all. So very cool. So if you go here, uh, pick up that work and maybe there's still time uh, to get uh, other works that will be released. But at least that's how it worked before. So if you're wondering how those works were distributed, that is how. Gogolitis with a little bit of interesting alpha here. Here's a little advice slash trick for all my pixel friends. You may be not aware of this, but you can get your own pixel art in the GIF section of Twitter by uploading your GIFs to Giphy. You have to upload 10 GIFs to be verified. It also works if you don't do pixel art. So an interesting way of expanding your reach. A very interesting idea here. Uh, and it's great to know because, I mean, how many people have probably tried this and then they don't see? Look, Gogolitis searches himself and there are Gogolitis' works. So very cool. Just very cool. Thank you for sharing, Gogolitis. Mikey de la Creme got his Uxine uh, shirts in the mail. And I also saw uh, Eurydice, who was on the Spaces yesterday. And big shout out and thank you to everybody who came to the Spaces yesterday. Uh, Eurydice had a DBO shirt. And here Mikey de la Creme has an Uxine shirt. 
Look what the mailman just delivered. My Uxine times Krypton XYZ T and hoodie. So it's looking awesome and just very cool here. I just wanted to highlight. So more Uxine and just more in the physical world. And here's Luis Ponce. So it's time to get physical. And here, of course, we've seen these kind of gif, these manic gifs. I'd be tempted to call them. And they're looking pretty nice. Uh, as far as how they're printed here, you can see the paper. It almost looks like torn paper a little bit here. And who knows what kind of print, I assume inkjet here. Looks like a very high quality print and a beautiful, even this UPC is pretty cool, one of 50. So just really cool to see that. All taken. <laughs> it sounds like they're sold out. Cream Safa. Look at this. My new piece, The Screen, will make its debut on July 14th at NFT Show Europe. So, Cream Safa is doing wonderful. As you can see, cool title, The Screen. Great music. And it looks really promising. So, just a really nice trailer here. Like, just very nice. So, very cool from Cream Safa. I thought this was just kind of an interesting... Uh, comment from LB. Although I'm very happy with the support on my Mario Paint series, it's weird to see it selling so good while I struggle to sell my main work. And I, I thought this was kind of funny. And I think it's actually, again, it's, uh, I think it's great. And I think it's a real advantage to us artists here on the blockchain, especially on Tezos, where there's, because things are cheap, there's an extra amount of liquidity. So when you release a work, you get a good sense of what the world thinks of your work, or at least this kind of limited pool of a couple of thousand people, what they think of your work right away. And I think that's incredibly beneficial and a huge advantage, interestingly, because it can be kind of offset, jarring a little bit. And you think, well, you know, what about my other work? But on the other hand, if you're working by yourself, like many contemporary artists do with zero representation and like, you know, that's 90, maybe higher, maybe 95% of the artists in Berlin, maybe higher, maybe 98% of the, like, right? Like how many people, how many artists are there in Berlin or New York or wherever? And how many are actually getting market feedback? Most people are working in their studios forever. So I, I'd say it's, uh, this is a feature not a bug like this is I, i'd say so that's just really interesting and you don't have to agree with the market either sometimes the market is wrong right with artworks and sometimes the market is slow to understand like i remember sabato had you know some of the glitch work and also what was it the corel paint gifts the the market was slow to understand that but i think there's some of my favorite works by sabato i was slow to understand it so there's sometimes the market is slow too. So it's an interesting data point is how I'd put it. And I'd kind of leave it at that. It doesn't mean everything. And if you really believe in this work that's not selling, you continue doing it. But it is important data and feedback, you know, and say, okay, well, there's something to be said for this series, at least that's selling this Mario Paint series. So uh, I miss this other stuff. Another weird thing is how I struggle to raise my prices, even though I try to sell additions. Yeah, more market stuff. Sometimes I just get lost. It's a, a bit of a bear market right now, too. And I think Tezos, unless you're really kind of going stratospheric like Uxine did, it, it is, I don't, I think there is a bit of a top, you know, I mean, every artist has their own kind of market. Uh, sometimes I just get lost about what I should do. And it also depends how much you release too. One thing is for sure, I'll keep doing what I love and try to make a living of it. Oh, and also I'll start to mint more on ETH. Like, there you go. Exactly. Start minting more on ETH. Start going to other blockchains. Uh, I'm always hugely encouraging. I totally encourage that. Uh, continuing on, Zoom. Good morning. And this is also something I thought was super interesting here. My digital style, my traditional style, my AI style. Yes, it's all me. It's like more than one person at the same time. They all have their own development process. They emerge in my different moods and continue to evolve. So I just wanted to, I've mentioned this before, but sometimes uh, artists kind of feel trapped in a certain style and that they have to do it. As Richard Prince, who has at least three or four totally different uh, styles uh, said, you know, the art world wants to put you in a box and that you're the, and with the one line, okay, you're the person that does that. You're the person that makes those cool AI artworks of the interiors of rooms with mirrors in them or whatever. 
Uh, but as but you have to just do your thing. And there's great precedent with Richard Prince and with Gerhard Richter, for example, of artists that have quite disparate or different styles uh, that they do and that they develop over the course of a lifetime. And so you have great precedent for that. There are, you know, it's not like you're the first person to do that. And so you don't need to feel, because uh, sometimes people might feel kind of weird and think they have to have one style. Uh, to me, modern art, one of the great, super fascinating things, and I think a Warhol, you're building process machines. In a sense, one way of kind of seeing that is we're all conceptual artists, one could argue. And that really, these are what I call process machines, ways of making work, kind of like they're, it's like working on different books. It's ways of thinking about a certain idea. So that's why I'll have my Nostalgia Studies series, all of my Screen Memories series, all of my Related Images ser series, and you know four or five different other series. And for me, they're uh, investigations of a certain kind. We're investing to see what kind of results we get. So I think this is great, all to say. And you know, there's been success in all of these different series here. This was a great piece. Uh, continuing on, RJ with some screen art here. Uh, continuing to push, continuing to push and develop somewhere else is the title here. So it's tempting to think that this is using AI, I'm guessing, because I know uh, JR, or sorry, RJ was playing with AI and, but I mean, pretty interesting development here, playing with the outlines, how they're bleeding out of each other. So this, you know, kind of bench seat area is bleeding into the person. So it's getting more experimental. It's tempting to feel a little bit more non finito. And I think it's working beautifully. Uh, look at these, what seem to be plants just kind of roughly done. Like it's looking like brilliant contemporary art is what this looks like. Even just the way uh, the uh, room, the perspective of the room is handled here and how even like the wall kind of bleeds up a little bit here. It's a little loose and looseness is a really, you know, looseness creates a natural contrast almost with digital art because digital art is so geometric and so precise that when you're loose with it, it starts to kind of look really cool and painterly almost immediately. Here's some other works coming out from RJ. So just really cool experimentation. Uh, so Again, we see the wall and just how it pixelates out, the weird couch, uh, you know, almost like these Hockney figures here, but we're starting to move away from Hockney almost into just pure RJ. Like I'm not seeing what, there's no obvious reference here for me anymore. A cool repetition. So RJ continues to basically like push things and evolve things further. This mysterious kind of work here on the bottom and then just a bit of architecture, these interiors, these spaces that almost don't make sense. Uh, very interesting work as usual from RJ. Continuing on, an Argentine digital artist, I believe, rustic digital art glitched, uh, key press start. So do you see video games? Uh, we're gonna see video games not, you know, all through this episode. And here's Mario and Luigi cut together brilliantly. Uh, and another Luigi there, and little cropped Mario's all over, a little bit of kind of noise text here, and just, you know, even like a little bit of like what looks like graphite on paper here with this smiley face with three eyes. Uh, brilliant work as usual. Key press chart, uh, times seven of these guys, almost looks like a self-portrait of sorts, 10 Tezos, and there are eight left. And so that is Rustic Digital Art, edition of 10. Rosetio, after a little break, maybe taking a little summer vacation there, Deja Vu, have you seen him? Digital collage from CC, from copyright free images and digital painting. So just another cool work here. Now, I don't think this is in the monster series, but it is tempting because it almost looks like a turtle or shrimp of some kind. Just an interesting creature here with this cool kind of almost Baconian Francis Bacon type uh, line space here over top and the moon and everything. So just interesting collage. It is part of the Monstrum series. Okay, so a new monster here. So very cool from Rosatio and there are nine left edition of 20, 10 Tezos. And Uxine with another work here, Mystique of Liberation and Accomplishment. So continuing 
with the uh, guillotine. Uh, so we were talking about dark humor here. And there, it, another kind of almost looks like the pixelated pirate flag, which I absolutely adore. And some cool flames here and a heart on. And so here is on a computer and here is the executioner seemingly. And then here is the head with the heart coming out of the eyes and this. So again, we're seeing a lot of symbolism here and surrealism here, uh, just very interesting work and pretty deep title here, Mystique of Liberation and Accomplishment. So this is an edition of 11 and let's just see very quickly what happened here and sold out in 60 seconds, 120 seconds for 111 Tezos each. Uxine brings home the bacon there making cool about a thousand bucks, maybe 900 bucks on the spot. Beautiful on the mint. Great work by Uxine. Uh, and just a cool, I thought this was really interesting. And this seems like a quote from somewhere as if time itself had grown weary of the monotonous ritual, or maybe it's AI. It's hard to tell these days. Beautiful treatment of this disc here. So always experimenting here, the digital martial artist here, uh, Uxine. Bizaya with an open edition at 750 each. I didn't see this was an open edition. Wounded Angel, part of this uh, kind of paradise series. Sky is an open edition. So Wounded Angel is their room in the sky, an anonymous cherub. And another person who I don't recognize, but I'm sure most other people do. Some pretty intense tattooing here. And just love the vest. That it looks like a Louis Vuitton inspired vest and just beautiful work here with again a kind of and almost like a depth of field in the digital painting here with the sun in the background and kind of like a heavenly work here. Wounded Angel by Bazaya, also out of Argentina. Moda MT. I wonder if Moda MT's out of Argentina. Everything he touches turns to gold. Fourth piece of modern Renaissance collection, edition of 10, price 30 tezos, and sold out very quickly, I think, at 10 tezos each, sold out within 20 minutes, and that is Moda MT. So a, kind of a kingly figure here looking up, and a couple of butterflies here, and a Tezos pendant, just interesting. That's a very, it is like a Renaissance painting, interesting texture in the background there. And a taste with a addition of one, an interesting digital painting here, this figure with the skull kind of walking through a mountain, through a mountain chain, or through the Alps or something like that, uh, going through on, on a hike and just a cool work made on an iPhone. And I'm a huge fan. I still start on the iPhone now, even if I'm using uh, Midjourney. I just use Discord on Midjourney on the iPhone. It's just too, way too much fun right now. So you go for a coffee and you, you walk out with works. It's beautiful. Uh, sale at only six Tezos. So good deal for temper there for a one of one painting. L'Inquisiteur, uh, The Untaken Polaroid by Andy Warhol. So an interesting piece here. And so here looks like a Polaroid camera. And maybe from Warhol's point of view, and we see a couple of Warhol skulls in the background, quite beautifully uh, done, rendered here. And someone who's kind of crashed out on the side. And interestingly, this person seems to almost be coming out of the camera because you don't see her body at the bottom. So interesting, another guitar here, beautifully done there. And inspired by the series Polaroids, 1958 to 1987 by Dan Control with the new animal, persuasive pink, deep in the eye. So now going with a rabbit. So just again, uh, getting quite good at this uh, and just more beautiful gradients. Love the solution for the background here. These gradient backgrounds and a beautiful one here too, I might add. So this is quite nice too. Uh, so just very nice work from Dan. Control, as usual, super prolific. Edition of 20 for five Tezos. And Lorna Mills just picked one up there and there are eight left. And I thought this was quite interesting. Ellie Lowe, of course, we know Ellie Lowe from all these wild kind of trash works here, right? Kind of edgy trash works, right? A lot of us are familiar with Ellie Lowe's work. And then you see a very heartwarming work here. Achilles, good night, little bro. I'll miss you. See you there. So unfortunately, it looks like Ellie Lowe's cat Achilles has passed on. 
So just a really beautiful kind of heartwarming work here. Uh, I want to call it like another function of art is maybe a kind of solace, a kind of way of dealing with these issues. So just a beautiful work by Ellie Lowe, edition of one, and what happened to it? Just probably kept for Ellie Lowe's personal collection. Very cool. This was beautiful, and I'm not exactly sure who the artist is. It's part of this show here, Super Rare Time Exhibition, A Digital Transcendence, The Intersection of Art and Tech, curated by Paloma Rodriguez. And so this one really stood out here, Select All Images with Lessons. I thought it was just, and the pixelation here, this is a great work. Uh, I don't know if, it, I don't think it's Matt Kane artist. I could be wrong. It must be one of these artists here. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, go check it out on Super Rare's Instagram, but just really awesome work here. Just love it. I love this topic. I mean, we've seen it a few times, the, uh, the captures, the visual captures. Uh, so it's a really nice version of that where the paint, you know, turned, you know, where it's just the paint is leaking out of the image. It's just beautiful. Uh, Flora Marquez, GM. So nice to see Flora on the scene here and an interesting, almost impressionistic view of one's own apartment is what it looks like, kind of encompassed in one image here. So I find that super interesting. Again, we we're discussing this idea of one of the great things about visual art is it's kind of a universe unto itself. These four borders where anything can happen, any ideas can be juxtaposed. And what's so interesting about this is in real time, if you were to go to your bathroom, if you go to your kitchen, you go to your bedroom, there's all a bunch of time in between. But here's almost this visual summary that hits you instantaneously at the same time. And so a weird kind of summary of your interior life, of uh, in, interior in the sense the interior of your apartment. So almost the furniture of the mind here to a certain degree. So just a cool GM, cool work by Flora Marquez. And here, LB, uh, very popular Mario works here. And again, I don't know the reference, but I love it. I love these kind of almost gym rings here. And I mean, this almost looks like a karate -ka background and we're back to video games. Right, or this is used using Mario Paint at at the least. I mean, so at least a video game uh, kind of aesthetic here, and there is maybe Elby and uh, Spirited Away is what this is called, part of Elby's Adventure Pop Culture Remix. And so, yeah, I picked up one of these. Colors are beautiful on here too. I might add, so beautifully done by Elby. Looks like again, it looks like it was made in Mario Paint and then maybe filtered through an analog video processor. Uh, giving it that extra edge. That is my impression. Uh, Miyazaki, I'm not sure what the reference is there. Probably most of you do. Another V-scape by Haiti Rocket, edition of one. Uh, just came out July 12th. Beautiful. Looks like maybe the colors uh, are, maybe it looks like a couple, maybe there's more color in this one, perhaps, and even a gradient. I don't remember seeing the gradients in this kind of cool retro software by Haiti Rocket. Just a really cool gif here. Third Generation Wasteland, edition of one, and 12 burned. And so listed, 11 at 37, none sold, and then turning into a one of one. Wow. Well, it's beautiful. More video games. Uh, so Nintendo Glitch ROM, Haiti Rocket, Cosmic Spacehead. Right? So this whole, like, we've been seeing this for a year now, these video game references. I think the comments have been coming uh, from everybody else saying the pixel art thing is related to video games, right? And so I'm finally, maybe I'm late to the party here, but I'm starting. To me, this almost feels like that is the, maybe that is the unifying quality or one of the main, one of the, one of the characteristics of what I'm tempted to call second generation digital art, perhaps. So Cosmic Spacehead looks like kind of a space video game. Very cool. Here's another Nintendo glitch ROM, this time courtesy of Francoise Gamma, no ROM number 10. And uh, cool back, I always love backwards writing. I have a thing for that and just a cool work here. I picked one up and really putting her own spin on the glitch ROM uh, uh, work uh, on a glitch ROM uh, genre. And look at this gorgeous, gorgeous work by Sabato. Again, this is on Zora, uh, which is a Ethereum layer two. 
Okay, and so it, in other words, it's very cheap to mint on it. And this is from a series called Le Mystère Mario Paint, Rendering in Pink 06, beautiful title here. And here it is, nice and big. Let me even get rid of the top. So again, uh, more video games, right? Uh, so again, and this one's gorgeous, by the way. Like maybe I need to get my wallet onto Zora because I sure would love to pick one of these up. I mean, it's beautiful. This is, uh, it's pretty long too, as you can see here. So just a beautiful glitch ROM from Sabato. I think this is, and just how this fades away here, these big chunky pixels, it's beautiful. Uh, I think this is using, yeah, Le Mystère Mario Paint. So just great work there. And Silva Sand 2's with, you know, we're seeing all sorts of, again, we're with the video games, uh, a glitch ROM, but uh, zoomed in. Zoomed in here from Silva Santus, who really puts their own spin on the glitch ROM idea. So are you ready, Ninja Gaiden Shadow? And buy now for only 69 Tezo cents. And more pixel art here. So this is courtesy of Stippin Pixel. And this is also on Zora. So let's just see here. I need to speed this show up a little bit, but just a, here, here it is big. I have to put them in a new tab and just open image in new tab because they, I don't see a maximize on the Zora site. So, but pretty fun and cool work here from Stippin Pixel. Great to see Stippin on Ethereum here, or at least Zora. And just really, really cool work here. It's long, another long work. So these two kids, kind of innocent, you know, going through, turning into just little blobs. I mean, I don't know how long this is, uh, but we have to get going. Like, I mean, it's an amazing, it's an ambitious work here. Like, how long does this go on for? And there we go. Okay, so we've seen the whole thing. Wow. Speaking of ambition, Meow's electric tracks. So this is two and a half sol. There are 34 left. So Gogolitis raising the price here. I mean, the first one sold out at 100 at about one Tezos each. Meow's electric tracks. Very cool work here as usual. Let's see if it shows up properly. And big shout out to Gogolitis for highlighting, here it is, for highlighting the last uh, little episode there. Uh, yeah, so uh, continuing on, the cat is moving through another pixel art factory here in this beautiful, it's just super fun and beautiful as usual. And kind of a interesting 3D idea here. So pushing things as the cat comes closer and then further and continues its eternal cycle here through this pixel art factory with the beautiful signature there of Gogolitis. So beautiful work on Solana. And a new one from Capin. This one's already at 56 Tezos, wow. So I was looking at, yeah, so sold for 30 Tezos, a lower edition. Uh, it really makes a difference. Uh, and this one's pretty awesome. It's nice and abstract, kind of looks like who was it? Was it Native Ed who was doing, or Phosphorus who's doing the processor inside of a processor? Kind of reminiscent of that. Kind of feels like an image of technology, but again, we're kind of back. I mean, what does this remind you of? It, what's my, my first association is Pac Man. And we're back to video games, the visual influence of video games. So, uh, and people love it too, I might add. And even just the speed and the movement, the animation kind of has a bit of a Pac-Man feel to it or early, you know, arcade video games. So Figments with another beautiful work, but instead of motherboard, Bothermord, I love it. Bite by Bit, I actually picked this up, it was a one of one for nine Tezos from Bite by Bit. I thought just a really cool abstract here, PC paint, retro tools, and just a nice experimentation, in black and white abstract work here. So that is very cool. And Remy Fort, who again programs a lot of the work here, uh, is a PNG file and yeah, usually disin disinhibition. Well, this is from March, so maybe we already saw this one and it was just relisted. But it's always good to go back and I believe these are all programmed in JavaScript, if I remember correctly. And continuing with programmed in JavaScript abstracts, here is not a number with a couple of new ones here, a couple of new one of ones here and playing with different colors and designs. So again, this is all programmed from my understanding of the explanation last time and sold out and sold out another one here. So love the colors too. And interesting stripe at the bottom. So just kind of cool, minimal works by not a number. 
And one bit necro with a kind of a wild work here. What is this called? Egg layer dot gif automatic writing revised necro pixel techniques. So of course, you know, there's an episode like from like eight or nine months ago called edgy pixel art, where we go a little bit deeper into one bit necro, but kind of a cult figure, <laughs> kind of like a, you know, dark pixel art makes some beautiful, beautiful work. And so it's always interesting. And we haven't seen a mint from one bit necro for quite a while here. Uh, so let's see what happens. Maybe there will be more and just minted and not sold. Internal Void, this is by Emmy, and I'm not sure if we've seen any work by Emmy before on this show. Edition of five, now it's 777, and there is one left on primary. And let's just take a closer look. I mean, it looks like a beautiful space scene here, and you get all the color of the stars. And here it looks like maybe kind of a sun and almost looks like a lighthouse or something, or maybe a sunrise of a certain kind, kind of ab semi-abstract, and you get this kind of a cosmic feeling to this whole work here. Internal void, inside your fleshy vessel is a void of many colors and memories. You feel at home here. That's great, Mayu slot machine. And so continuing on and just the skeleton at the slot machine here. And again, kind of a bit of a video game feel to it. And continuing on more pixel art, this time Notorious Man XTZ, am I strong enough? So here a picture of what looks like a Spartan warrior here looking off into the distance and the sunset with this beautifully dithered sky here and sea on the coast. And yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the temperature in Greece right now and I sure hope it cools off by the time I go there in a few weeks. Element Lee with a couple of awesome releases here, Book of Web Pages. So kind of almost feeling a little bit different here, slightly different, love the fingernails by Element Lee here and Book of Web Pages. Is that what it's called? Book is so interesting title, kind of looks like a phone, looks like a book. Just an interesting work here, edition of 20 for six Tezos, 18 left, just minted. And this awesome sink here. So it's always edgy and just like, you gotta love this kind of almost random looking stuff. It looks like hand drawn pixel art, as they say. And you even see the, what looks like water kind of going down in a you know spiral here a little bit and just really interesting work as usual. Sync 200 pixels by 200 pixels, six Tezos, 16 left. And Green Ginger with again, kind of a video game-esque uh, perspective here, that 45 degree angle looking diagonal, the Gunslinger Showdown. And here it looks like a little Western town and one person disappears. They both shoot at each other and one goes down. Edition of 30 for 250, there's one left at two, actually there are several left for 250 from Green Ginger. Pamelo Cerrone with another work. So putting out tons of work here, gotcha. GIF animation at auction for 25 Tezos, a one of one. And another cool kind of mixing pixels, big pixels with textured paper in just another just interesting GIF here. Gotcha at auction for 25 Tezos. Lucas Lejeune. We really need to speed up here. Sim ribs, and so a cool, really awesome kind of abstract animation here with some nice kind of flashing squares here. Just a cool work from Lucas Lejeune and Acid Boy who could hang really well in the same room here. Another kind of psychedelic work by Acid Boy. This is on Object, I think, available for 15 Tezos edition of 10. So Space Extruder. And there are three left. So you see, like, because Acid Boy has done really well on Super Rare in many places, but it's good to, you can't always sell on Super Rare if the market's getting crushed. And maybe Acid Boy is doing fabulous on Super Rare, but all to say, Tezos, again, it's a feature, how cheap everything is. It's a, not a bug. Uh, and so continuing on, Rakano here everywhere, taking a machine that many of us are familiar with from probably about 1990, a Sony Discman, with even the orange headphones, I feel like maybe, I think mine were black, but I had basically those headphones too. That brings me back. So that is sold out, edition of five. It is now 22 Tezos on secondary. The prices are keep going up. It is 11 Tezos now on primary. Lorna Mills, Trivial Conveyance. And this is pretty cool too. 
and kind of a hard to actually place. It almost looks like toys that are racing through here. I feel like if she's watching this, she would be laughing at me trying to describe this. Uh, cool color, by the way, too, and just a whole bunch of random things kind of moving along here. Uh, seven, uh, 700 by 700, 15 Tezos, th addition of 32. There are 26 left, so just cool work from Lorna Mills. And DJ Kuro with a couple of kind of uh, cryptic uh, works here that I quite liked. And I actually picked up one of these small editions, and they're very low price at one Tezos each, edition of five. So I thought just kind of cool looking. Perpy number one. A shimmering purple form becomes frozen through frantic and repetitive practice. And here's another one, Perpy number two. Again, only one Tezos and on primary. And I thought just kind of had a really nice feel to them. Uh, continuing on, Mika Aladef. So again, we saw Mika just last week for the first time collaborating with Sky Goodman. Artifact 2 and just interesting glitch artist. I mean, we're seeing different kinds of glitches here. So... Here is one, Artifact 2, available for 15 Tezos, and here's Artifact 3, uh, and this is a one of one, and let's just see, sold for 35 Tezos. So interesting artist here, uh, glitch artist, to discover cool text here and everything. Uh, continuing on, another glitch artist, Daniel Oropesa, a composer, creative coder, and on super rare. And so let's just look at the work here. So just pretty cool, Glitch, I assume. I mean, pretty rad looking work here. Uh, you know, and it goes for 15 seconds. Let it play a little longer here. So pretty, pretty mind bending work here. And that's on Tezos, five Tezos edition of 10. So you can pick up one of those. Uh, continuing on, X Mortal with a really cool satellite uh, dish here. And a radar. This almost looks like a radar satellite dish. Not exactly sure. We have these in Saskatoon at the University of Saskatchewan, and it's very cool. Uh, just in an open kind of field, you have all these. I think these are radars. I'm not exactly sure. Night transmission, 3D model, uh, played back from digital Eurorec. So glitched out, analog glitch or video, analog video from X Mortal, and one available on secondary for 16. Tezos and sold on primary for 666. Beautiful color. And here's Samfe with, we're going back to the walking person and then with a little bit of feedback here, really rich textures and colors in the video art. And then they all catch, the skeleton catches up with itself. So that is pretty cool. And says so Samfe and I don't see a link here. So I'm not sure if that was minted. Uh, augers with a work also in the video glitch category. A seascape. I mean, pretty powerful. Remind. Beautiful audio. I'm going to tear up. I mean, the last time we saw his family on the beach, this is beautiful. Goes for a minute. So that is Augers. So check that out. Enrique Cartaco, if I'm pronouncing that right. Cartajo. A CRT Seascape Season 2 catalog. Buy now for only four Tezos. Six left. Pretty rad. And Sky Goodman is on the front page of Object One. So big congrats to Sky Goodman. That is awesome. And this collaboration, I think, with... I think it's mostly sound design by X Mortal. Another moving work. This AI, this one's only 10 seconds. Quite beautiful. Kind of soothing. So nice piece here on object one, a one of one. And I'm not sure if it has sold yet. Uh, we should, we'll keep track of that. Turkarak with a one of one. And it was hard to tell, bargaining countrymen, I couldn't, because Turkarak has been releasing some physical works, so this looks physical, but the color actually looks uh, digital because it's so bright. So it's hard to say what's going on here, but interesting to see just different work from Turkarak. Interesting artist, White Solitude to Kiss. So this is July 12th, uh, edition of 10 for five Tezos. And again, just these incredibly amazing textures here. AI, 
I mean, AI is making basically nicer brushwork than you're seeing in like oil painting. So I'm not, I'm still kind of trying to reconcile what that means in my mind here. Uh, the kiss, I mean, beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, Flowers in Mourning, this is by Soom. And here is another work with this kind of really pale figures here. Because it has a surreal feeling to it. Almost Magritte-esque in these kind of, I think you call those plane trees. And just interesting, just, you know, very surreal kind of feeling work. Especially with these huge flowers and everything. Uh, edition of 10 for four Tezos, super interesting. More beautiful work with Tux, who's on Maker's Place. Bid starts at 0.1 ETH. Is anyone out there? So trying out Maker's Place which is awesome. And by the way, it's a glitch in Twitter. I follow all these people, by the way, if you ever see that, I, just so you know, that's a Twitter glitch. Uh, anyway, beautiful work here uh, from Tooks, uh, rad uh, colors there. And here's another one, GMGN fam. Good morning, good night fam. And just really interesting work, uh, beautiful color work. And again, it has a real surreal feeling to it, doesn't it? From Tooks, here's John Thurman again. Uh, who did the grocery store work and here now in the laundromat. I kind of love it. These public places, right? These publicly but totally artificial places. Till number 26, laundry day. And of course, John is putting out a work a day. And almost like this kind of, you know, interesting connection here between the woman at the back and then the guy at the front. Almost interesting kind of orange similarity there too. And then her reflection in the in the uh, washing machine glass. So just an interesting work here by John Thurman. Another one. And Marina Amadova, Nebula Junction. So almost photographic here. This is also an AI artwork. Kind of has a bit of a Independence Day USA kind of feel to it. Maybe that's accidental. Almost looks like a gymnast or something. Interesting work here. Invites you on a celestial journey where cosmic clouds intertwine, revealing the mesmerizing beauty of the universe. Edition of 30 for 5 Tezos and Venta with another super interesting work here. Just keep floating. Again, very 3D-esque and kind of almost like plasticine here. So interesting AI work there and Runetune with a really cool combination of photo and drawing here. So again, the photograph in the back and then this kind of multi-headed monster figure with several mouths and some wild eyes here. And it looks almost physical, but it's probably digital drawing on a photograph. So edgy work here. Do not make eye contact, erratic behavior, edgy open edition from Runetune, big shout out and three Tezos, six have been minted. And here, PP Universal, this looks like a physical work, Dancing Fordo with my impossible love, Iggy Azalea. I just love this composition. I think it's, it's all about just the dancing here, and I think it's just a great composition. So nice work, PP. Again, that looks like a physical work. And here's Mika Noelson with a cool abstract here. And I think this is digital. This looks like digital abstraction doesn't it? Because it, at first it looks like physical brushwork, but it's actually digital, you can see. So interesting kind of conflating of digital and physical textures. Mikael Noelson, working class with a work here too, with I think a lot of us recognize Larry King here, and maybe that's working class, not sure. And with a happy face bleeding from the eyes and a kind of window with clouds, so mysterious work. And of course, McDonald's and some paraphernalia there. Edition of 12 for 12 Tezos each. Working class interview by Larry King. Rest in peace in the limbo. Pretty hilarious. Acrylic on recycled paper. So physical work here. And of course, you recognize who this is. This is Walk. And I feel like this is probably a famous image that I don't know. I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something. So I don't know what the reference is here, but I thought it was beautifully done. And there's another great work by Walk here. Sound, uh, this one was brilliant. Again, if you don't know the word synesthesia, is where you can see sounds and hear colors. And this one I thought was, again, just brilliant. Kind of, you know, vaguely reminiscent of that artist that does these words. What's his name? We'll have to look him up. But I almost like uh, Walk's work better uh, sound and beautifully done here. And again, the spray paint is just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And here's Nugget Brain with another awesome work here. Uh, really colorful fields, uh, accentuating the color here. Uh, tulips, wax pastel drawings on display in Madrid at Garn Art Gallery. So con congrats to Nugget Brain, uh, doing really well there. 
uh, just a really awesome artist. If you haven't seen these, we looked at some of these earlier. Love this artist here. And that, my friends, is your show. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, take care.